Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to Vanessa VIPB. This is a story all about how, <laughs> this is a story, one in a series of all about how my life was turned upside down, all about how I was thrown away as a child. Uh, I wasn't taught anything. I wasn't taught that I was worth anything. Uh, I was everybody's slave, everybody's doormat. And so whenever you tell a story, you got to kind of start at the beginning because if you jump around, you will not really fully understand the story. So today, I'm going to do a several videos back to back, same shirt. I ain't changing, girl. I could change and make y'all think it's another day and another dollar, but girl, I just got out the bathtub. I put some lotion on. I grabbed this wig. That is the best I'm going to do. <laughs> so, today's story is going to be about, or the title of the video is going to be about when a mother fails to love her own children or when a mother doesn't love her own children. Who else? is going to love them. When a mother fails to love her own child, who else is going to love them? <sighs> so, in my stories, I always speak for myself, even though I am the oldest of six children. I am currently 55 years old going on 56 this year and I'm the oldest of six children for living um, and I speak for myself because my other sisters and brothers were there but they were younger than me and they were protected by me so they may not have the same accounts of things that I have. Uh, some of my siblings we were 10 years apart, uh, some eight years apart. So the tragedy of my life <laughs> began long before they were even here. Eight years before they were here, 10 years before they were here, much of the damage was already done and I just want to use my videos to encourage and motivate others you are not alone if you've been through some of the things that I've been through you are not alone if you find that you are a mother like this or if you are a grandmother and you find that your child and your daughter and your son is like this sit down and have a reality check with them send them the link to the video somebody needs to show them a reflection of themselves and the price that it's going to cost their kids somewhere down the line When a mother doesn't love her own child, who else will love that child? When a mother abuses her own children, everybody else is gonna abuse them. And My mother abused me at a very, 
very early age. I'm talking about young, young. Maybe in the womb, young. Uh, she abused me at a young age. Granted, my mother was a teenage mom. Uh, she got pregnant with me, I think, when she was 15, and I think she had me when she was 16. Um, and her and my dad weren't married. They eventually got married. Uh, I don't know if my mother was like me because I got married when I was 16 but because I had taken care of her children I already know how to be a mother and my mother was not the oldest of her siblings and she kind of didn't like grow up around them fully so I don't know. I don't I don't know a lot of history because people fail to talk about things and uh, they hold those things in and they don't use them as a learning experience. I don't even think they learned from them. I that's one reason why I talk about <laughs> my stuff that I went through because it helps me to verbalize it. It helps me to learn from it. It helps me to process it. I don't even think that they learned from anything because they didn't talk about it and they hid it and they, I don't understand. But I don't think my mom was like me in the sense that she didn't, maybe she didn't know how to take care of no children. Maybe she really didn't want children. I kind of think she didn't want kids, but yet she kept having them. I don't understand that process. Uh, maybe she was so wrapped up in her hurt, sorrow, pain. I don't even know if she had hurt and sorrow and pain. But... I do think she was running from something. I just don't know what it was. I think she was running from something. Uh, I know that my dad was violent, very violent. Um, I know that He was violent, he was an alcoholic, he was a drunk, he was verbally, physically, and mentally abusive. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to have had a child from him. And yet I don't know why she did. And I think she tried to leave him on multiple occasions and I know she tried to leave him multiple occasions. He always found out where she was. He always broke down doors. He always broke in. He always beat her. He always cursed her. But I don't know if my dad was the only thing that she was running from. I don't know. Uh, often when she ran, she left us kids with her mom, my grandmother. And again, I don't know why she did that if the dysfunction in your family was so bad. Why would you part with your children and leave them in a bad environment? And now the environment may be worse than it was when you were growing up. So we were often abandoned. 
we were often left with other people uh, we were often left with our grandmother we were often abandoned and almost taken in by the system but I want to talk about when your mother doesn't love you nobody else is gonna treat you right uh, even though she left us in the care of her mother her mother was always working her mother had three sons her, her brothers who were deadbeat men and they lived with their mama all the girls were out of the house she had seven daughters all the girls were out of the house left the house had their own families but the men they were they were still there <laughs> They were still there. Then she had this other man who stayed with her, who had been living with her for years, who us grandchildren just grew up knowing him as our step-grandfather. Uh, he was kind of, well, he was an alcoholic. He always stayed in his room. Sometimes he came out, he would curse and, and but, he would pretty much just go in his room a lot and just stay in his room and get drunk the first of the month when he got his little chick. Um, but just not having a mother's love, not having a mother there to nurture you, to take care of you, to comb your hair, to teach you anything, to tell you that you're beautiful, to tell you that you're cute, just to have your mother abandon you every few years, come back and get you, take you back. And I always used to wish, and I'll get to this part later, I always used to wish that my mother did give me, I'm speaking for myself, I always used to wish that she did take me to CPS and give me away. Uh, when I was a little girl, I'm talking about a little, little, little girl, young, young, like maybe five or six years old, maybe even younger than that. My mom and my dad were still together, but they were breaking up and he was violent and she would call the police on him and he would come back, he would kick down the doors and it was a hot mess. I witnessed all of it. I grew up with a nervous condition because of all the violence in the home. Um, and she would take out on me I guess he beat her <laughs> and she turned around and beat me and we lived in these in this apartment building where it was like a duplex, but there were duplexes underneath. And there was one large apartment up at the top and there were stairways, a stairwell leaving, leading up to the top. So we lived up at, at the top and the, the stairwell was enclosed in and it had a door at the bottom that you had to go to the bottom and open up the door. Uh, my mom would often beat me, literally physically beat me. I'm talking about y'all. I'm like three, four, five, six years old. This happened for years. And she used to beat me. And the stairwell 
was enclosed in and when you turn the light off in the stairwell it's totally dark and you close the doors to the stairwell and the stairwell is separate from the house she would sit me in the stairwell at night close the doors turn off the light with a suitcase and tell me she's gonna call the police on me and she's gonna send me to CPS. I'm in the stairwell in the dark crying and this woman that calls herself my mother does not let me into the house. And all I grew up hearing over and over again, you're just like your daddy. You're just like your daddy. Well, my daddy <laughs> was a low down, dirty dog. My daddy was beating her. My daddy was an alcoholic. My daddy was a drunk. And every day of my life, I am being punished because you allowed this man to impregnate you. And every day is my punishment. I'm sitting on the outside of the stairs for whatever she gets upset about. And I'm sitting on the outside of the stairs, being hollered at, being screamed at. Being told that I am worthless. Being told that I'm a nobody. Being told that I would never amount to anything being told that she's going to call the police on me and she's going to give me away and that was embedded in my brain as a child I seen how many times she called the police on him I seen how many times the police took him away and I grew up <laughs> scared of the police. I grew up scared of the police because I'm being told every day, I'm being set on these stairs every day as punishment. I'm talking about a little bitty girl. I'm being set on these stairs as punishment. I'm being told every day I'm gonna be taken away by the police. I got a suitcase next to me. I'm gonna be taken away by the police. And I think the main reasoning for most of that was I loved my daddy. <laughs> I loved my dad. My dad was worthless he was a wife beater but my daddy could cook <laughs> my daddy could cook and my daddy was very 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 clean and if he wanted to he could have been a wonderful man if he wanted to. He never, he, unfortunately, he never wanted to, but he could cook. He is the reason why I love fruits and vegetables. He is the reason why I love home cooked meals. And I don't know why. I just loved my dad. 
and I think the reason why I probably was close to my dad when I was younger before they got divorced was because he used to take me with him everywhere he went from when I was born and maybe at that young age I felt more closer to him than I felt to my mom because he was taking me with him everywhere he went and maybe she shunned me and mistreated me because I was close to him and so I really 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 believe I was mistreated because I loved my dad I was always with him and now this was before like this were when I say was with my dad this was before they got separated like when I was a little girl I think after like I was in the fire I think I was in the fire like around four, three or four years old, like around four or five-ish, like they started their separations and so I don't really have any recollection of my dad after they separated, which was probably around four or five, no later than six years old, but They fought so much, so much domestic violence, so many police calls. He went to jail so many times. He ran from the, would do his dirt, leave before the police came. But she was always calling the police. She was always threatening that she was gonna call the police on me. And y'all, it was so bad. I actually had a nervous condition. And sometimes she would whoop me and I just would be crying and then she would beat me more to stop crying and then she would put me in the hallway well since you won't stop crying you're going in the go in the hallway so this school that I went to like preschool that I went to I was young y'all I can't remember how old I was but I know I couldn't have been no more than five years old or something like that. Like, what grade do you be in when you like in kindergarten? Girl, that's how young I was. And the school was across the street from our house. And I used to come home for lunch and so I was coming home and I seen the police at our house. I'm a baby. And all I heard was she called the police on you. She called the police on you. So instead of coming home for lunch, I ran. Where I'm running to, I don't know, but I ran. Now my grandmother and my aunts lived, they lived on the same side of town, but it was so far away, you guys. I'm trying to think in reference of miles. maybe three, four miles away. And I run and I'm just walking the neighborhood trying to find my way to my grandmother's house or my aunt house. And I'm just walking, walking, walking and crying a little girl. And this man comes up to me and he says where is your mom 
I'm like, she called the police on me. I'm going to jail. And I was hysterical. I was hysterical. Y'all, I was hysterical. And I was crying. I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. She called the police on me. She's going to give me away. And the man just started walking through the neighborhood, knocking on everybody's door. Do you know this little girl? Do you know her family? Do you know where, where she is? Where she lives? This is how far I'm away from my grandmother them house. I'm still not close enough to where the people in the neighborhood know me. So I'm still making my way or maybe I took a wrong turn. I don't know. But it was a lot of people in the neighborhood that he was stopping and saying, do you know her? Do you know her? And we just had to keep walking. And he was like, well, where do they live? And I'm a little girl. I'm trying to remember where the houses are. And this man just took me all around the neighborhood, kept walking farther, deeper into the neighborhood. Girl, that man could have did something to me. I would have, I would have, I would have never been found. So finally he goes to somebody's house and he asked, do you know her? And they like, yeah, her AT live over there. And by this time, the school is calling my mom and asking my mom, was I coming back from lunch? And my mom telling them she never came home. And they would mean, what you mean she never came home? And she's like, no, she left school to go to lunch and she never came back. And my mom saying, no, she never came home. So, y'all, it's late in the day. I guess everybody starts a search party looking for me. Next thing you know, my aunt called my mom and tell her Vanessa's over here. She said you called the police on her. This is how traumatized I was because my mom constantly, constantly, constantly told me that she was going to always call the police on me. She was going to give me away. She always set me in the hallway with a suitcase and I seen the police at the house and I just ran. That's how traumatized I was. And then my auntie, them got me back over to the house with my mom. I'm kicking, I'm hollering, I'm screaming. I don't want to. It was so much abuse, so much hate and not love. At one point in my life, when I, when, when I was 14, I didn't want to go back around my mom anymore like I was like I'll stay even though no matter what situation I was gonna be in I was gonna be abused I was like I'll stay and take this abuse <laughs> over that abuse and because she was always in different relationships and I had been sexually assaulted by one of those relationships I didn't want to be around new men I didn't want to I'm like the next and this is why I say in my videos to mothers every time you bring a new man in the house you're potentially bringing a man in the house that is going to eventually take advantage of one of your kids and it's sad to say that women are so desperately in need of love that they would subject their children to potentially being victimized by the man that they bring in And I didn't want to be in another position where this man is going to do something to me. 
and you didn't listen to me the last time, you're not going to listen to me this time. You didn't care about it this time. So why would you care? You didn't care the last time. You're not going to care. So I had to quickly learn that this person does not have my best interest at heart. So I have to start thinking and protecting myself. But that's how traumatized I was by my mother who didn't love me, who beat me, and everybody else in my life follows suit. Everybody else in my life mistreated me and beat me because they seen her doing it. Even the man who end up taking advantage of me, he seen her, he seen predators find, predators find the weakest link and that's who they target. He seen how she treated me. She probably even told him, I can't stand her. She just like her daddy. And he picked me as his victim because of how she treated me. He seen, he found the weakness. He found that she had a hate against me. He found that I was more like my daddy. He found that I was already being abused. Why not just abuse the wounded puppy? Why not just abuse, add insult to injury? Why not? Why not just do that? And that's what he did. When you mistreat your children, you set them up for more mistreatment. Other people are watching how you treat your children. We used to get beat as kids just because she mistreated us and then other people came along and mistreated us and we would get beat for whatever they said. Whatever they said, we would get beat for it. And I had to learn how to not show emotions, not hold the tears in. You're gonna go to the hallway and sit in the dark all night long and be cursed out all night long and be talked about all night long and be told you're just like your daddy. That was cursing out. You telling me I'm just like my daddy. I see this man beating you. I see this man an alcoholic, but you keep telling me I'm gonna be just like him. I mean, some people do not need to have children. I have said this before and I will never ever take it back. My mother had six children and she shouldn't have had one. She shouldn't have had one child, not one. The more she had, she didn't, she didn't do no better by having her kids. And oftentimes, you guys, when you're living in sin, your children 
will pay for your sins. We pay for my mother's sins. She may not realize how we pay for her sins. She may not acknowledge how we pay for her sins. But we pay for my mother's sins. And it's sad that a lot of this falls on the mother, even though she was a single mother. A lot of it really falls on the mother, you guys, because you are the ones putting yourself in a position to have children for a man that's not gonna be there, which means you're gonna be the mother, you're gonna be the single parent, the burden of everything is going to be on you and you're putting yourself in that position to take the blame for everything because you're the one that's doing everything wrong. The other person is not there to be accused of anything. So you put your own self in that position by keep having children for these men who are not gonna be there, you're making that decision to be a single mother. Well, if you can't take care of the one you got, why have six, five more? Why have five more? That's not cute. Having children and you're not taking care of them. You're not teaching them nothing. You ain't learned nothing. You ain't trying to be nothing. You ain't trying to be nobody. You're not trying to break the cycle. You're not trying to break the generational curse. You don't leave from one man and try to at least get with another man that's going to be a father figure. No, you leave one situation and get with you leave one deadbeat man and get with another deadbeat man. And if that's all that exists in the hood that you live in, maybe you need to get out the hood. Maybe you need to get out the hood. But some women, they just keep having kids and keep making babies and making babies and, 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 and then the responsibility of taking care of the babies is on your oldest child. That's not fair. That's not fair. That is not fair. Y'all my videos have been very long. Let me know if you mind the long videos. So instead of make, I don't know how long this video gonna be. So instead of making it longer, that is like part one of my mother not loving me, traumatizing me, mentally and physically abusing me at a very, very, very young age to where I was scared. Like I say, I grew up with a nervous condition. My legs, when people would fuss at me or whoop me, my leg used to just go up and down like this. Just I'm talking about, I don't know what they call it, y'all, but my leg would just bounce, 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 bounce up and down, and I couldn't stop it. Then I was whooped again stop it stop it and it was uncontrollable and I don't know how the people that did things that they did to me live with themselves I don't know how they sleep at night I don't know how they are not tormented. I don't know how they don't remember 
the things that they did. Maybe they didn't think there was nothing wrong with the things that they did. Maybe they didn't think when this child becomes a grown woman, she's gonna remember being locked in a stairwell and made to stay there all night long and made to stay there with the suitcase and made to stay there telling her that you're gonna call CPS and you're gonna call the police. And I grew up wishing that she would have called CPS. I grew up wishing that I would have known what else was out there. Could it have been better? I don't know. I mean, to me, I feel like it couldn't have been no worse. So I grew up wishing that she would have taken me to CPS. I grew up wishing that I would have known whether or not it would have been worse. And that's sad. That's sad that a child would rather be in the system than to be with her own mother. At least I wouldn't have had to be a doormat. I don't know what my faith would have been, but I'm just telling you that I often wished I wasn't born. I often wished that she did give me to CPS. I often wish that I would have been taken away because it was embedded in my brain so much that and I don't know like why I caught so many whoopings <laughs> and I'm this little housekeeper this little maid this little cook this little babysitter I just don't understand why I caught so many whoopings. Like y'all, I caught so many whoopings and then everybody started whooping me. I mean, it's ridiculous. You getting, you getting beat. You getting beat. You getting beatings on top of beatings, on top of beatings, you traumatize a child to be like this all the time. And when they go other places, everybody else recognize that child being like this all the time. And then they become a punching bag every where they go. Everywhere they go, they become a punching bag. In school, teachers, other relatives, other, it's like, it's like my mother cursed me. It's like I had something on my forehead that said, hit her. Beer. And everywhere I went, I have always been picked on. I have always been mistreated. I have always been lied on. I have always been bullied. It's like something to expect. It's like the devil know the devil knows who I am. He knows just pick on her. <laughs> but 
the devil knows who I am. He recognizes Vanessa. I'm not one of his. And I guess I never was. I guess I was always recognized by Satan. He, al he always knew who I was because he allowed me to come out the womb and to be subjected to beatings. That's sad when your own parents are used by Satan to try to destroy you. I didn't need to be destroyed by anybody else from the beginning. My mother was doing a very good job at that. She was doing a very good job at destroying me, at destroying my self-esteem. You know how the first years of a child's life determines everything the first years of my life determined everything else thereafter. It set, it set the stage for the abuse, for the beatings, for the torment. It set the stage. She did that. She taught me. My mother was my first abuser. My mother was my first abuser. And she set me up to be abused after that by me. And I'll talk about that in the next video. <laughs> I don't know, I can't see, so I don't know how long this is. This is part one. of when your mother set you up for failure. I don't know what I'm going to title it, but when your mama don't love you, girl, you is in a pickle. So let me know what y'all think about this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be notified each and every time. I upload a new video and if you're not subscribed to Vanessa's Van Life Journey subscribe to that video as well and if you uh, look underneath the video if the subscribe button is black or red you are not subscribed to the channel double check periodically and make sure you are not unsubscribed sometimes people get unsubscribed for whatever reason I don't know but you may think you're still subscribed, but you may not be. So double check and look and make sure the button is not black or red. Make sure it is white or a light gray. And again, you guys, if you want to support the channel in any shape, form, or fashion, all my information is in the description box below. My Cash App, my PayPal, and my Amazon wish list. Just look below the video and you're going to see more or a down arrow and all my information will be in the description box. I will talk to you guys later. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if these videos are helping you in any shape, form, or fashion. Maybe my tears are helping you to recognize your hurt and pain so you can cry these tears. We can cry these tears together and get over to the other side. Thanks for watching. Bye now.